Hey, what's going on, everybody? I bet you can't guess what we're going to talk about today. Yeah, we're going to continue our guessing game. All right, I had to throw in one of them stupid, cringy jokes just to make your ears bleed and your soul die inside. But now that I got that out of the way, we can start by learning about random numbers. So the concept of random is quite interesting because many things in computers seem random, but they're actually not random. And this is known as pseudo random. So if we can basically feed in enough inputs to some number generator so that it just generates a random number that makes it very hard to predict that number, that is probably close enough to random for most use cases. So that's what we're going to be doing. And the thing that's going to basically feed or input to generate that random number is going to be the system clock. Since the time is always changing, it acts as a good seed for our random number generator. But if you just give me a second to give one last thank you to Embarcadero C++ Builder for supporting this part of the series. Thank you, shout out to them free community edition IDE, I'll drop a link down below. If you need a place to build C++ projects, that is the tool for you. So the very first thing we're going to do is include, and we're going to include C standard lib. This is going to introduce some of the capabilities needed for random numbers. To get a random number inside of play game, we can output playing game, and we need to do something to generate a value here. To do this, you will invoke rand. So let's run this real quick, see what happens. Also, before we do that, I need to uncomment that, that I messed up in the previous video. And before we run it, what I wanna do is actually output the correct answer so we can see it. Since it's no longer hard coded, it's kind of difficult. So we'll say C out, correct, and L. Hit play. And you can see the generated number is 130. Let's try this again. This time it is, oh, what, 130? Yeah, that doesn't seem very random. What's going on? Well, that's because we never seeded, which is introducing some value to base the random number generation off of. And the way you do this is before you generate the random number, you say srand and pass in some seed value, which we are going to get from time. And this takes some argument. I actually am unsure what the argument is, but you can pass in null and that works just fine. So this is basically saying, hey, we want to see this random number from our system time. So let's go ahead and just see what time does. And we'll pass null in here. Let's try it now. So we will play this on any difficulty. Here is the time and that is used to seed for a random number now. So we have 5595. When we run it again, most likely that's going to be a different number. And you can see it is 2576. So this is kind of difficult. You know, how are you going to guess that number with only five guesses? Even I would have a hard time getting that in five guesses, so I can't even imagine how difficult it would be for you guys. So what we're going to do is we're going to figure out how to take that random number and reduce it to a smaller number, but we still want it to be at least somewhat random. It's not going to be perfect, but it's going to be close enough, and that is to use the modulus operator. The modulus operator is going to do some division on that number and take the remainder. So we could divide it by a smaller number. The smaller that number, the smaller the possible remainder. So we're no longer going to need to print that. Just wanted to show you that for demonstration purposes. And to use the modulus operator, you use the percent sign. You might also hear modulo. And let's say you wanted 20 possibilities. You could use zero through 19. To do that, you would put 20. So if you imagine for a moment, the random number generated was 60, you divide that by 20, that's going to go into that perfectly three times. So you're gonna have a remainder of zero. So that is a possible value that could be outputted. If instead you had a random number of 61, 20 is going to go into that three times with one left over because it's going to use integer division. So no fractional numbers. So 20, 40, 60, one left over. You'll never get that remainder of 20 because you're dividing by 20, so that would just increase the result of the division, not the remainder. If you have modulo 20 or modulus operator of 20, 
you can get the possible outputs of 0 through 19. So if you had, say, 79, you would get 20, 40, 60, 19 left over. If you had 80, then you'd get 20, 40, 60, 80, 0 left over. This is not perfect because it's not going to have an even distribution of output and numbers. You can look into this concept more, but for our purpose, it's going to get the job done because the user is not going to be able to easily predict which numbers are most common. But in theory, if you ran this software and you wrote down every single random number, certain ones are going to be showing up more just based on the result of the different divisions. So in this situation, if you had modulus of three, you're trying to grab a number zero, one, or two, zero is going to show up four out of the 11 times. And that random number max is 10. So basically you're going to take 10, divide it by three and see what the remainder is. Four out of the 11 times, because zero is included, it's going to give zero. So zero, three, six, and nine. Similarly for one, four, seven, and 10, it's going to be four out of the 11. And then for two, five, and eight, three out of the 11. So two is a result that's going to only show up three out of 11 times instead of four out of every 11. It's kind of a simple concept, but also kind of challenging to think about and wrap your mind around if you're not super comfortable with uh, division and math and remainders. So sometimes I'll even have to think through this, you know, make sure I'm getting the right range of numbers. But let's try this. We'll run and we have five guesses. The answer is 16. So you can see now that's a much more reasonable number to ask the user to guess. Now, if you want a little challenge, make it so that it'll tell the user if their guess was too high or too low if they get it wrong. Go ahead and pause because I'm gonna show you how to do that now. We will check where the guess is correct and we can add an else if and check to see if guess is less than correct in which we can say see out too low mate I also have not been super consistent about how I space out my if statements so I apologize if I've introduced any confusion and then we can just have an else we don't need an else if because there's no other possibility if it's not equal to it and it's not less than it it must be greater than it so we'll say c out too high mate and this will give people at least some direction you could also tell them what the highest and lowest possible numbers are if you wish to do that but let's try this now so we will guess you can see the answer is two eventually you're going to remove that you're not going to leave that in the final product it will say zero too low mate four too high one it's too low three and then finally two. And just to throw some variation into this, we're going to change things if it's in possible mode. So if it's in possible mode, we're going to make that max number way higher. So to do this, we don't actually need to change the calling code. So down here where we have play game one, we can leave that the same. And we can just change the function to check how many guesses. So if the guess is passed in was one, we know it's in possible mode. If guesses is one, what are we going to do? We will define a different value for correct where it's going to be rand but modulo 200 instead. Now, because we're doing it this way, what we're going to want to do is define correct up here like so, but then initialize it later. So we're not going to redeclare it here. Now, obviously the arrangement here is kind of bad. Apologies, it wasn't really looking. So we want the seating to be up here and then this option to be within an else. So it'll look like this. Take this line and we will move that here. There we go. So now it's one or the other. Let's test it out. Make sure both options work. Have you beat the game? Yes. You get one guess. You can see the random number generated was 186. Let's try it again with it being set to something like medium. So you can see it generated nine. Now, that's not necessarily a perfect test because, you know, it could have just by chance generated nine, but I'm pretty confident in this code here. Not so confident that I would uh, bet my life on it, but I think it's pretty decent for what we're trying to do. So this video was a little bit longer, but hopefully it was fun. In the next video, we're going to be talking about some new stuff. We're going to start from scratch. So I'm really excited for that. Stay tuned and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.